are watching West Harper Community West Television. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Beautiful studio audience. Yes, they're yeah. wonderful. Yes. Uh, so I'm very excited to be back. I've I've taken a little hiatus, but I'm very glad to be back. And with my favorite guests, who've been here many times, with yeah. Jacques Lamar, who's a playwright mm -hmm. extraordinaire. Yes. Elizabeth <laughs> Petruccini, who's um, losing weight with Elizabeth, also the author of Born Fat. And Jacques Lamar, just in case any of you viewers saw my play, uh, Honey La Brea, The, the Lonely, Lonely Phaeton, he wrote it. And this is my, my costume from Act One. <laughs> just an homage. <laughs> so, but I'm really excited about um, talking about the event that's coming up at the Mark Twain House. So why don't you start with that, Jacques? Uh, well, on April 18th uh -huh. at 7 p.m. at the Mark Twain House and Museum, uh, we're doing something really exciting uh, for me, which is um, you know, my three most uh, kind of popular plays uh, that I worked on by myself uh, in terms of, uh, there are things that I've collaborated on with other playwrights, but uh, um, that being I Loved, I Lost, I Made Spaghetti, which premiered at TheaterWorks in Hartford, uh, Born Fat, uh, which premiered at the Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, and Raging Skillet, which premiered at TheaterWorks in Hartford last year. Um, they're all based on uh, the stories of, of women who had um, various uh, hurdles to overcome, uh, and we, um, you know, I dramatize their stories, and it's the first time that all three women are going to be on stage. Uh, right. I think not only together. I don't. I don't think any of you have all been on stage either. You know, in any combination on stage before, uh, talking about what it was like for them to trust me with their stories to turn them into plays, and to you know what it's like to watch your life on stage come to life with with uh, actors portraying you, and um, and you know the impact that the plays have had on on my life and on their lives and how they inspired me. Um, and that even though the, the stories are their stories, there are things that I um, uh, responded to in coming across the material uh, that spoke to me on a personal level. So we're gonna be talking about all of these things with, with, uh, with the three women, one of whom is sitting right here. That would be me. Yeah, and that's you. Elizabeth. Yeah, so we'll just, um, just to stay on that for a second, one sure. of the things I love, and it's not just based on women, is we all have food issues. We all have our emotional relationship to food. Mm -hmm. And we all, I, I feel like there's, there's very few people I meet who are completely happy with, with where they're at. They always feel like they, they need to be different and it's centered around their relationship with food. So I love mm -hmm. that, that th this whole event really centers on that, you know, man or woman, we all have so, have so much to learn. And we can learn it by the journeys that, that these women have been on. So Elizabeth, your, your journey um, and the book Born Fat, tell me about that and, and what you felt about the play. Well, it was uh, really, uh, on my, in my case, it was very difficult just watching 
uh, my life unfold on stage because it wasn't a very good life so you know but it was motivational and it was funny and at the end you felt so happy and and at some points you stepped back and it wasn't you anymore and it was that woman up there and you were so happy for her because she seemed to come out of the woods you know yeah. so well, yeah if you could explain um you lost how much weight altogether you lost 93 so much. Ni yeah. 93 pounds yeah you and you had gotten to a point where you were either going to die or which was you were the, lose which weight. was what I was trying to do. Exactly, you were I was making every effort. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a slow death of being overweight, but doctors can give you all sorts of medications right. to, you know, cholesterol, diabetes, they can high blood pressure. They can give you all kind of medication to keep you alive, which I didn't know when my thought of suicide by food was, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't know they could keep me alive like that. So it was, I was uncomfortable and and I wasn't dying. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> but she, you know, the, her story is, is not only the story of losing those 90 pounds, um, because you did it and lost it and did it and lost it. She yo-yoed many times. It was how okay. she did it and kept it off, but also became an inspiration to others through her losing weight with Elizabeth program. Which is, uh, where, where can they uh, tune in to losing weight with Elizabeth, the program? In Waterbury, it's Sky TV. Sky TV? Sky uh -huh. TV, and on losing weight with Elizabeth on Facebook. Okay. So you can right. find me there. YouTube. YouTube. I have a YouTube station. And so, you know, but my whole idea is that you lose weight slowly so you can keep it off. Because I lost 0.6 a week for three years. Right. Now, most people would go, are you kidding me? I can't lose that weight that slow. Yeah, it, it would be hard. Yeah, because you, you think of going on a diet and you're all focused. You're like, and you feel great. You're like, okay, this is it. And you, you lose the weight. But then you're like, so now what do I do? Well, if you can't keep yeah. it up, you can't keep it off. Exactly. That's it's, a, it's the yeah. whole thing. You know, because the, the diet almost seems like, like the easy part because it's such a distraction from what's going on. You only need to eat, you know, consume a certain amount of calories and it comes off. But then it don't, didn't you find that you really needed to face your, your food demons? Yes, and you, you know, the but yeah. the other thing is, is that if you're not giving up pizza for the rest of your life, or cheeseburgers, or, you know, pina coladas, whatever your, your you know, poison is. Which is what I had for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All three. Well, that explains yes. it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you, you're not giving those up for the rest of your life. So if you're not giving them up, for the rest of your life, you're going to have to include them in your diet. I don't like right. diet, but you have to include them in your diet, and that will be slow weight loss. Right. But it'll still be weight loss, right. you know. So right. you're you're going to have you know my successful weight loss went like this, you know, all over, not like that. But people whose weight loss goes, you know, like you know, just goes like that, they're gaining all that weight back. Exactly. There's no exactly. doubt about it. They could, you know, they can do all the food delivered to their house. They can take pills. They could do whatever they want. Right. Do you know what I always think of with that is when Oprah famously came on stage and she was wearing like a size four jeans and she had a wagon full of the, yeah because she was full doing of all the fat she lost because she talked right about that back. in the play. Yeah, because she was yeah. drinking uh, like you know slim She's fast a, or something a like that. Liquid diet. Yeah. Liquid diet. And but but you talk about that in the play. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't do that because you're not going to stay on a liquid diet for the rest of your exactly. life. And she did look good, though. Yeah, she looked great. But, but, look, but she said the first weekend that she went off, she gained five pounds. Yeah, The definitely. very first weekend. Okay, so so when we talk about, so yours is born fat, and then we have, I loved I lost, I made spaghetti. Mm -hmm. that, that toured nationally, too, or regionally. It's still touring. Yeah, yeah. and it's um, gone to Florida, it's gone to Texas. Right. Uh, actually, it hasn't been to Texas oh, yet, to Texas. but it's been to, to do two different theaters in Florida, and it's been in Ohio, it's been in New Jersey, it's been in uh, New York State, it's been two theaters here in Connecticut, up in Massachusetts. This year it's going to be in Colorado and right. Georgia, um, and it's really been a word of mouth hit, um, which has been great for me. 
and um, it's it's uh, quite different from Elizabeth's story in some ways, um, and in other ways it's actually it's kind of similar. Her, yeah, it's still her relationship with food. It's yeah. her relationship with food, but um, it's really through the lens of wanting to um, find someone to spend the rest of her life with, and she goes through a succession of, of boyfriends that she cooks for, uh, and it's how she uses food to kind of attract men and mm -hmm. to find herself attractive. It's how she um, tries to cook to keep men, and it's how she uh, uses food to console herself when she loses men. And there's, um, there's a good chunk of born fat where Elizabeth is, is cooking to please other people in her life rather than please herself. Right. And so um, that's one of the things with, with Julia. I mean, Julia, like Elizabeth, loves to entertain, loves to cook, loves to show hospitality. Um, but whereas Elizabeth's story is really more focused on Elizabeth's challenges with Elizabeth and the legacy of her mother, um, I think Julia's story is more um, uh, um, about, about, I mean, her mother plays into it a little bit, but it's really about, um, about finding a home right. and, you know, creating a home and creating a relationship and and expressing love through food. Right, and, and Julia will be there too at the event. Julia Malucci will be there. She's a, a vice president uh, of Harper's Magazine um, and she uh, has loved the journey of, of the book turning into a play. She said I was like a bad boyfriend, which the book is about <laughs> bad boyfriends, that I would like say, oh, I'm going to do something with this book, and then I wouldn't call for six months, right. and then I would call, and she'd be like, you're like a bad boyfriend. <laughs> you just need to commit. <laughs> and so um, the process of, of writing that book, um, once I finally sat down to do it, hap that play happened very quickly. And um, and then I was like, what am I going to do next? And Born Fat happened much more quickly in terms of from the concept to uh, Elizabeth's um, book is, is a very different animal than Julia's book. It's, um, it's really a lifestyle guide in some ways. It's called right. You Were Born Fat. And there's maybe 10 pages of autobiographical information yeah, at the nice. beginning. It's not the whole, all, right. the whole thing because there's also you know, journals and recipes and exercises and, and all kinds of motivational things. So with, with Elizabeth, I, I sat down and the majority of the information really, I, I've known Elizabeth for years and, uh, and I, it wasn't until I read her book that I actually really knew about a lot of these struggles. And right. so then I sat down with her and did an interview with her for the better part of a day and said, you know, just talk me through your life, and her life is way more extraordinary right. than um, than the book leads you to believe. Probably and the worst day of my life, really. <laughs> <laughs> just talking about it, <laughs> right? But it, but still, but I'm sure it's it's very cathartic as well, right? Yeah. Yes, it was really, it yeah. really was. But it's so many things I forgot, and I remember calling Jacques, and I said, I forgot to tell you about blah 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 blah, and he goes, No, I can't hear any more sad stories. <laughs> <laughs> Because some of the stories, particularly pertaining to her mother mm -hmm. um, and the loss of her son, are are very tragic. Right. And um, and the thing is, Elizabeth, when you're coming to her house for a dinner party, uh, you you know you had no idea that this was all in the background and things that she was dealing with. Right. You know, she was just a, a a good time gal. And so, uh, you know, what the thing is, her story. And Julia's story to a certain extent, because the way Julia's story ends in the book is, you know, this horrible, horrible breakup to end all breakups. And, you know, I kind of didn't fake a happy ending because she did get engaged and did get married and did achieve what she was looking for after. So that kind of, I blended that a bit into the play. Mm -hmm. But Elizabeth's story is really ultimately a story of triumph. You right, know, exactly, over, yeah. Over not only her, her body image issues and her weight, but in terms of, of how men have treated her, about how coming to terms with how her mother treated her, 
And, uh, and so, you know, I have my own body image issues uh, and weight struggles. And, you know, I'm in the process right now of losing weight. And, um, and Elizabeth's been very inspirational in that, in that journey. And then with, with Julia, you know, I think about my own self-esteem issues and relationships and what, you know, what I wanted to get out of relationships. Plus, I lived in Italy. I fell in love with Italian food. Uh, and, and I know that, you know, in the way that, you know, she would use food to lure people mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, or, you know, there's a lot of talk about food and, and Elizabeth's play as well, you know, that we, it's something we all can relate to. Right. We all have a relationship with food right. and, and, you know, we all have a desire to be loved. We all desire to have a happy home life and, and a good relationship with our parents and, yeah. You know, for Elizabeth, that, you know, that didn't necessarily happen with her mother. Her mother was right. a very difficult person. Uh, and and um, Raging Skillet, to bring the third play yeah, in. Yeah, Raging is, Skillet. Speaking and, of mothers. And 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 mother, I am yeah. the author of Raging Skillet. I mean, the. And Chef Rossi. And yep. dude, she's going to be there, too. She's going to be there as well. She's going to be there, too. And, okay, so we've um, got three magnificent ladies. Yes, yes. Okay. And they're all going to be signing their books as well. Wonderful. But, um, you know, her, her story is very, you know, in some ways very similar, but also very different. You know, she's uh, a New Yorker like Julia. Uh, actually, she was born in New Jersey, but she's a New Yorker now. But she's, you know, a lesbian punk rock caterer. And she came from a very orthodox Jewish home. And food is part of how she rebelled against her, her mother and her upbringing. And so um, that play, rather than being a one-person show, like I loved it, Lost and Made Spaghetti, um, where she's cooking an entire Italian dinner from scratch, uh, Elizabeth's show doesn't have any food on stage, but it's present. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's there uh, as something we love and fear. And with Rossi, um, you know, the food is integrated in, into the stage production as well. And so she's doing chocolate dip bacon and she's doing Manischewitz spritzers and <laughs> Snickers <laughs> and potato chip casseroles and stuff. But she's, uh, her mother comes back from the dead to haunt her on the night of her book launch. And um, it's, it's, you know, a, a very kind of traditional, uh, strong uh, Jewish mother uh, who has come back to guilt trip her daughter. And, um, and you see that, you know, um, the kind of the confrontation between right, the between. two of them, of two, two women who love each other, but uh, at the same time kind of can't stand what the other one represents in some right. ways. And so uh, all three of them are oddly comedies. I'd say even your play is well, well, yeah. really I mean if you, you you can't help but laugh at that play. Well, yeah. well you know yeah. I mean the, the the truth is is that you know out, out of pain you know like stand up comics can be the most depressed people uh, out of pain can come some really great dark comedy but what I found in all three plays is using food to heal from pain because we all mm -hmm. have that pain comfort all, yeah yeah I mean as some way to help heal, to help fill yourself up. And I find, like, when, when I saw I Loved, I Lost I Made Spaghetti, it was more seeing her story yeah. with, with, uh, with Elizabeth because I, I, I come from a, a similar background than her. I, I could relate a lot, but it was about my own empowerment and how I still struggle to feel that way. So seeing you feel that way really inspired me. And Chef, Chef Rossi was, was great because my, my husband's Jewish. So I could relate to 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 what you were to what she was saying in the play mm -hmm. and to those family dynamics, but it's it's so encouraging to see other people deal with it. So that's what I really hope Pe people who who come see this production really well and are inspired they, and, by and all three women come out the other side exactly. You know, with, so I think all three plays are very motivational uh, in that you you can come out the other side. Right. And be, uh, you know, and be happy to, yes. you know, the degree that you can be happy, you know. Right, right. And and yours is Losing Weight with Elizabeth on Facebook. You mm -hmm. also can be on YouTube. Do you have a site? Your own site? Like, go to Elizabeth 
Facebook.com or anything? No, just, just, through those? just on Facebook, and the channel is Elizabeth Petrichone on YouTube. Oh, okay, and, and you have a site, don't you now? Yep, it's JacquesLamarPlaywright.com, but there's also BornFat.org and um, SpaghettiPlay.com. I haven't gotten together a Raging Skillet website yet, but yeah, I do it all myself. Yeah, you, you have yeah. so many plays. You have so many things going on. Yeah, and, and the thing is, with like Honey La Brea, The Lonely Phaeton. Um, oh, I'm you know, sorry, I, who, who starred in that? Uh, I believe it was uh, a Marsha. Oh, it was Howard me. Card. Oh, I forgot. Yes, okay, yes. go ahead. <laughs> but I, mean, I love writing female characters. Yes. I love writing um, women who are strong and have a sense of humor. Um, and uh, you know, I, I there's there's a through line in a lot of my my work of of trying to even with um, you know poking fun at Scientology with. Honey La Brea, there was, you know, there are moments where you see that she's got frailties and oh, yeah. fears, she and just she wants becomes, to fit in. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, and so I think, you know, I'm I'm drawn to not necessarily underdogs because I think, you know, by the time I my got my hands on Elizabeth's story, I wouldn't say she was an underdog. She had really kind of. Move you know, forward. Move yes. forward. Well, it was excelling. You were happier than you'd been in your entire life. I'm happier now than I've ever been. And so, and I don't remember drawing very many happy breaths till I was 60. Wow. Yeah. So. Which, which is the perfect segue to my theme. It's never too late to go for your dreams. It's never, never too ever, late. ever, ever. I mean, I didn't go to a regular playwriting program in college. I took one playwriting class, and I just did little bits and pieces, and I didn't really get going until I was in my 40s. And now that I'm 32, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna it's say. really... No, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, because he has the, the Benjamin Button disease. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, the thing is, it's, you know, there's a lot of people who get discouraged very young, right. and they just give up on their dreams, and... And uh, to me, it's, uh, you know, I'm living the dream right now. Right. You know, I'm very lucky to have my work being done. Um, you know, I just recently had um, Varla Jean Merman, the drag performer that I write for, up here in Hartford for a sold out evening. I'm um, doing appearances where I'm actually appearing on stage myself doing a play called Red State Road Trip, where I talk about my trip to Missouri and Arkansas. Uh, did that in Connecticut. I'm going to be doing that up in Massachusetts, and um, you know, and it's you know, it's exciting rather than just being a playwright who sits and writes stuff and hopes that it will get done. You know, that it's that it's happening for myself. And I think, you know, you had a dream to have a TV show, yep. and you made it happen. And you have become like the multi hyphenate author, life coach, you know, uh, weight loss coach. leader, personal trainer, you know. Plus, she's so damn cute. Adorable. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, and, you know, she's, she's inspiring, and Chef Rossi's inspiring, yeah. and Julia's inspiring. And so she's this full evening. She's vinegar, isn't she? Who? And Chef Rossi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I mean, all three of them are such personalities. I mean that in the right. nicest way. And Let's I, get that clear. I should, <laughs> I should, I want to make sure that I mention that this evening is sponsored by the Friends of the Mark Twain House, which is a wonderful organization of volunteers who support uh, the, the Twain House through fundraisers. So there is a charge for this event of, I think, $25. And but where do you, they go to get tickets? You can go to marktwainhouse.org. Okay. Um, but uh, it doesn't include just the talk uh, with uh, myself and the ladies. It's being moderated by Eric Ort, who is the Artistic Associate at Theatre Works, uh, and a tremendous guy. And a wonderful uh, director. And a wonderful director. I, Eric is really talented. And um, he, he directed you in something, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, and then... Uh, um, but then there's going to be tastings of uh, the food, right. of some recipes by some of the ladies, um, including some of uh, Chef Rossi's creations, I believe. Have you given me your recipe yet? I, I can't gave remember. You a couple of recipes. Yes. So um, the Pond House Cafe is going to be doing the food based on their recipes. Oh, fun. So there's going to be wine. I think there's going to be some Manischewitz spritzers uh, <laughs> from Chef Rossi. 
uh, and there's going to be a really fun evening of conversation and, and about again, theater the and books and women. Again? And it is April 17th, April 17th at yeah. 7 p.m. And again, go to marktwainhouse.org. The event is called Playing with Food. Uh, Jacques Lamar and his muses. Okay, perfect. One okay. of my more amusing muses. <laughs> well, you know, um, and also, just just so you know, mm -hmm. this show is, is permanent, so people are going to see this when when April 17th has already passed. So I want to make sure that they know that they can go to your website, yep. they can go to you on Facebook, mm -hmm. and they, they, can, they can look into the book, and they can look into to what you're doing. And many yep. good things are going to happen. You know, I'm really I looking hope. forward to your... Uh, Marsha Howard Carp, one woman <laughs> show. <laughs> Broadway's calling. Wait, do you hear that? Broadway. Okay. <laughs> Broadway's calling. No, but but thank you so much for being on. And it's and I'm just uh, another one of my my themes is it's never to, never too late to go for your dreams. Really is also because I know we all go through this once we're past 35. Surprise, but, <laughs> but well, you know, I have a way to go. <laughs> right, but, yeah. but but people think I'm not young. I don't have the energy. Why why even try? And there's always 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 room for your dreams to come true, no matter how what age you're at. I have three you eighty year olds me. that lost thirty pounds. That's wonderful. So yeah. you know what? It isn't never too late to never just ever too to late try to take care of yourself or to build a new dream. Right. You okay. know, perfect. No matter what. Is no that, matter what. Is that okay. how we're ending? That's how what I. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. matter what. Hashtag. Oh God, that's so passe. <laughs> but who cares? I know. Hashtag, Hashtag. No matter what. And I guess then that will be a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs>